Hi everybody, it's Linda. Welcome back to my channel, U Tips for You, where I share lots of helpful tips on beauty, fitness, healthy lifestyle, natural remedies, and so much more. Well, in today's video, I'm going to share with you my 15 best beauty habits. And beauty habits are so important because those are the things that we do every day and they make the biggest difference on how we age, how we look, how we feel. And it's important that we keep them simple because you're more likely to stay with something that's simple than something that's complex that you abandon, like a skincare routine that has way too many steps. So my beauty ha habits are simple. Um, I've done them for many years. I collected the best ones for you and I'm sharing with them with you in this video. I hope you find them helpful and I hope you'll incorporate them into your life. Alright, so let's get right into it. And they're in no particular order. Um, the first one though I felt is so important that it's number one. And it is to remove all of your makeup every night. No matter how tired you are, no matter where you are, or what you have to do the next day, if you fell asleep on the couch, I don't care what the excuse you have to remove your makeup and wash your face with a cleanser and water. It's that important to your skin. It will help keep your pores clear and clean. It will minimize the breakouts that you suffer when your face is dirty. And it will get you into a really good habit of applying moisturizer. And that's my second beauty habit. After you cleanse your face, it's important that you begin to get into the habit of using a good moisturizer. Start in your late teens, early 20s, adopting really good beauty habits. Um, if you've got really oily skin, then maybe you can get by for a while in life without having to use a moisturizer, or perhaps you just want to put it on the dry areas, like around your eyes or uh, you know, around this area, around your mouth. But for the rest of us, we all need a little moisture, especially in the winter time. So if you cleanse and wash your face every night and every morning, don't forget the morning too. Because overnight we sweat, we have heavier products on our skin that we don't want to wear throughout the day. And if you wear makeup, you want to put makeup onto a clean face. And you know, we accumulate little discharging around our eyes while we're sleeping. You want to wash all of that away. If you've got dry skin, just plain water can usually do the trick. Or you can spot clean your face. Maybe just use water on a good portion of your face. Maybe you'll just want to use a little soap or cleanser on your forehead. You decide. But cleanse your face in the morning and then apply your moisturizer. Now people always ask me what I use to cleanse my face and I always recommend the same products that I have used for years since my early 20s. And that is Purpose Soap or Purpose Facial Cleanser. Both of them are very gentle. They don't strip your face of your essential oils that you need. They don't clog pores. Wonderful products. And for cream, I'm always asked as well. And I always recommend my Olay Complete that I use during the daytime. It has an SPF 15 in it, which I find, hear that little bird, it's evening out here. Um, so the, 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 the crickets are coming out and the, and the night birds. It's a beautiful fall night. And um, I love the Olay Complete because it's light. Uh, it protects me a little from the sun during the day with the SPF 15. And it's great under makeup. And at night, I really like to have something a little richer. So I use Eucerin Q10 Anti-Wrinkle Cream. I've used it for years. I've tried many night creams. This has been my favorite. I love the results. I love the feel of it. Um, I, I can highly recommend it to you. All the links will be below in the description box for you. And my third beauty habit also has to do with a product for your skin and it is to use Vaseline. Vaseline is one of the most exceptional skin occlusives that there is. A skin occlusive is something that helps you retain moisture in your skin. It is so wonderful. It creates a barrier over your skin and it locks in the moisture that's in your skin and it's very healing as well. Um, if you've got any kind of irritation, you have chapped lips, um, you have any kind of windburn dry skin, it's very rejuvenating. Um, it won't moisturize your skin though, 
So you'll always need to put your moisturizer on first. And I use Vaseline for nighttime application. I don't use it during the daytime. Um, it's too heavy and as far as application of makeup over it, it's a little difficult. But for nighttime, it, it can't be beat. It's better than olive oil, mineral oil, uh, and even coconut oil. It's fantastic. Um, a little goes a long way. Always apply your moisturizer cream or whatever you wear that you like to do at night, like my user, and I'll put that on first. And then I will always cover it with Vaseline. Always apply it on clean skin. Do not apply it if you haven't washed your face. You don't want to lock in dirt and oil and grime, okay? You want to put it on a clean surface. I've made Vaseline a regular part of my beauty life, and I can honestly tell you that it has given me tremendous results. Um, ladies, it's not for acne. If you have acne, do not cover your acne with Vaseline, okay? It's not what you want to do. It'll make things worse. Put it on areas where you don't have any pimples and where you have dry skin that you want to retain moisture. And it's very helpful at night to wear heavier products on your face because we lose a lot of moisture while we're sleeping and because your face is on a pillow all night. So any kind of crunching that you do along, you know, a, to create lines or anything like that, they won't be etched into your face uh, and become more a permanent part of your of your skin if you've got moisture in your skin and your skin is kept supple. So, and my fourth beauty habit is to always wear a base coat under your nail polish. It will help reduce um, discoloration that happens when you put the colored nail polish on. So if you can use a clear base coat or a very light color underneath whatever color you're going to use, it'll go a long way to protecting the looks of your nails so that when you want to go polish free, you don't have those orange um, and yellow discolored nails. And a word to you about growing your nails. If you want long nails, you're going to have to abandon wearing nail polish all the time because nail polish dries out your nails, causes them to get brittle, and they will break. If you want to dress up your nails a little but you still want to preserve um, the health of your nails, which, uh, you know, your nails are actually a, a living up until you get to the white part, and the white part is, you know, dead nail. Ch check out my video called French Light. I'll link it below. It's where you do kind of a partial manicure, and you just coat the tips of your nails, and it gives a really nice look, and it still protects your, you know, healthy part of your nails, so you're able to still grow your nails, but, you know, still dress them up a little bit, and I love to do that especially in the summertime. And my fifth beauty habit that I want to share with you is to rotate your shampoos. I have found this to be one of the best things you can do to revitalize your hair, keep it fresh, keep it alive, keep it bouncy, because it will help reduce the possibility of byproduct buildup on your hair. You know, we all get a new shampoo, we're all excited about it, right? We use it, and then after a couple of washes, we notice that, you know, our hair kind of looks too greasy, or it's too oily, or it looks starts looking dull. Well, that's basically byproduct buildup. There are, you know, things in shampoo, silicones, moisturizers, you don't need them every day. So while certain shampoos can be really helpful for one or two washings, mix it up. Switch on that third washing and you know and, and and choose a different shampoo I generally will always rotate between about three shampoos and on usually the third wash uh, I will you know grab something else and you can do the same with conditioners sometimes you'll want a light conditioner for your hair you don't want to feel so weighed down other times you want something rich and thick you really want to you know um, coat those ends and and by the way the best thing I have found for deep conditioning is to use olive oil on dry hair. Hands down, it is one of the best deep conditioners that you will come across. I've tried all the other oils. I've tried masks. I've tried conditioners uh, that you buy specifically for deep conditioning and nothing compares to the olive oil. Be careful with it though. You never want to put too much oil in your hair because then you have a hard time washing it out. For me, I never go under here um, with the oil. Do the ends, um, keep it on, you know, for half an hour or more 
put it on before bedtime. The next morning, if you're going to wash your hair, you know, wash it out and you will see the difference. Do that every other week at least. Close your cuticles, prevent split ends. It's, it's a wonderful treatment. And I want to quickly mention that washing your hair upside down with a handheld shower is one of the best beauty habits that you can have to add volume to your hair, to clean your scalp really well, and to help prevent damage and breakage. I've done it for years. It's one of my first videos I put up on YouTube where I recommended this technique. And I want to remind you about it again while we're talking about shampoos because it is fantastic. And my sixth best beauty habit that I want to share with you is facial massage. It is one of the best things that you can do for your skin. It relieves stress, which helps you reduce wrinkles. It helps prevent wrinkles because it brings circulation to your skin and fresh oxygenated blood. It's almost like a little workout for your face. I do it literally every night and sometimes I do it during the day too if I feel tension over my eyes or I'll start rubbing my little furrow area because that's where I hold a lot of tension. A lot of people do. That's why it's one of the first areas on most people that to develop wrinkles. All right, So you're going to have to work a little bit, ladies, to keep those wrinkles from getting deeper. Okay, look, we can't we can't eliminate wrinkles completely because we're going to get them. Our face moves and over time you develop something. But with the right beauty habits, you really can minimize um, wrinkles and fine lines to the absolute minimal that you can possibly have. And one way to do that is with facial massage. And get ahead of things. If you start to see that you're developing, you know, jowls or, um, or hanging skin or, um, you know, limp eyelid skin or anything like that that you, don't, that you don't like, turn to facial massage. Grab a nice light oil. I always recommend jojoba oil. It's one of the best. And just start using upward motions. You know, you can't go wrong in what you do. Circular upward motions. You'll start to feel the tension release. You'll feel the, the, you know, the blood coming to your face. Nothing feels better than warm compresses on your face for about five minutes, followed by a facial um, massage. And of course, who can talk about best beauty habits without mentioning sunscreen? and sunblock. Um, now I don't think it's necessary for someone to layer on sunblock every day. I, I just think they're just trying to sell sun, sunscreens and sunblock. But I do think it's important to have a little one in your face cream. Okay, so that's why I like the Olay Complete. It's got an SPF 15. So I use that. It'll just shield out some of the sun on my face. Um, and But what the important, the important um, sun situation, I think, where you really develop the good habits, the good sun habits, is when you're out in the sun for extended periods of time. When you're outside playing tennis, walking, um, you know, you're at the beach, places like that where you get big doses of sun on vacation, okay? Don't just lie there with wild abandon and just, you know, soak up the sun's rays for hours because you will age your skin and you will cause sunspots and over time you will see the effects on your skin and you will lose the collagen and elastin fibers. You'll break them down and you will have sagging and aging skin before your time. You can literally accelerate your aging process by doing that. But I don't say overkill and wear sunscreen, you know, like it's a chemical. You don't need to wear it all the time. The best defense is to block the sun, okay? And that is by covering up or getting out of it. Go under an umbrella, stay in the shade, block it with a hat, put on a shirt. They have some really great UV clothing now that you can just put on and you block the sun. And I'm not saying you should hide from the sun. The sun is exceptionally healthy for you. It's how your body makes vitamin D. It lifts your mood. It, it triggers hormonal production. It's really, really important. Um, and you know, full body sun uh, for about 20 minutes is probably the most that anybody can safely get without starting to cause um, detrimental effects like sunburn or you know irritation or something like that. Okay, so you know, keep that in mind. If you're going to be out longer than that, put a shirt on. You can just put that on, and you don't have to just lube up all the time with sunscreen. And if you don't like hats, wear a visor. 
but shield the sun from your face. Be cognizant of those areas of your face that actually do pick up the sun, the prominent areas. For me, it's above my mouth. For my daughter, it's her forehead. Look for those areas. You'll know those areas because you'll see freckles there. You'll see uh, signs of wrinkles there. Uh, and over time, you'll know, well, that's where you'll get sunburn there. I used to get sunburn up, up above my mouth all the time. I know that's a spot for me where I put a little sunblock. And I just shared that again in a recent video, um, the sunblock that I use. I'll post it below in the description box because it's a really good one. And like I said, don't just be concerned with your face. You should be concerned with your whole body. You know, why shouldn't the rest of you look as good as your face, right? Why shouldn't the skin all over your body look just as nice as your face? So that somebody looks at you and thinks, hmm, is she 25 or is she 45? They can't tell. All right, I've been the beneficiary of exactly that type of thinking. People have a hard time guessing my age. And it's because I've taken good care of my skin by being mindful with my beauty habits. So my eighth beauty habit is about your diet because no beauty treatment or habit in the world is going to make up for a really poor diet. Um, you really do have to focus on having whole foods, natural foods, lots of fruits and vegetables, and avoiding processed foods, foods with chemicals made in a factory with dyes and additives and things you can't even pronounce. Your body doesn't know what those things are. It does its best to filter out these toxins and process them. But you know what? There's no substitute for real, whole, natural food. And I know it takes t more time to make natural foods. It does. But you know what? It's really worth it. Because the benefits that you'll reap from having a healthy diet are so enormous over your lifetime and for your beauty and physical appearance. I can't even tell you. So if you find that you don't have enough time in a week to make some healthy foods and store them in the refrigerator for you to, to, you know, to have during the week, then you really need to start looking at your lifestyle and see what you can adjust because there is nothing more important than what you put in your body and your health. Okay, they say we are what we eat and there is 100% truth to that. I have seen it over and over and over again. It is so important to make eating healthy a regular beauty habit. And number nine is to work natural foods and herbs into your skincare routine. There isn't a single product that is sold on the market that is going to benefit your skin as much as something that is fresh from nature, as something that you prepare fresh and place it on your skin. So there is a place in everyone's life for this. You don't have to do it every day. But how about once a week you do a facial mask and you pick something that really highly benefits your skin, that, that leaves your skin feeling soft and smooth and, and, and enriches it with vitamins and minerals and phytoestrogens and builds collagen and elastin. And I can recommend a few and I'm going to post a few videos I've done to get you started with ideas with some of my favorite things to place on the skin are yogurt cucumber, aloe vera, honey, green tea, and natural oils. We all love our beauty products and our creams, but I think it is essential for everyone to use natural ingredients on their face periodically. It's not difficult to do. You can sometimes, you know, you can eat an avocado and then just grab a piece and just wipe it all over your face, provided your face is clean. Just think about ways that you can use natural foods, things with vitamin C, things with lactic acid, things that are probiotic, things that soften, things that um, reduce hyperpigmentation. I have so many I've shared over the years. I'm going to link some below, like I said. Um, it will make a big difference. And the tenth beauty habit I want to recommend to you is to go natural. No makeup. Get into a habit of getting comfortable with no, wearing no makeup. Well, look how dark it's getting. Um, it's one of the best things that you can do for your skin. Okay, it'll help your skin breathe. It'll help your pores unclog. Um, it'll help shrink your pores. 
because products and things that we layer on starve our face of oxygen, um, it gets inside our skin, and it takes time for it to come out. So you need a period of time of cleansing and washing and rejuvenating and skin cell turnover to get rid of products that you put on your face and on your eyes. So try to get comfortable with it. I just did a video about how to look beautiful with um, no makeup and I wanted to inspire you um, as a result of you know the COVID lockdowns we're not wearing as much makeup use it as an opportunity to explore how you feel without makeup and, and, and we've come to a point where we just we feel insecure if we don't have our makeup on but we can undo that okay we can we can recognize that that we are beautiful without it um, and have the same feelings of confidence with minimal makeup, maybe just moisturizer and chapstick, etc., that we do with a full face of makeup on. All right. So give your skin a chance. Um, let it go naked and be free and be wild, and go without makeup on your face. And my eleventh beauty habit that I practice religiously is uh, I want to recommend that you take care of your teeth. Um, it's one of the first things that people will notice about you. Having clean, healthy uh, teeth and a bright smile makes you look younger, keeps you looking younger. Take care of your teeth. If you uh, eat or drink staining foods and drinks like coffee, uh, tea, berries, like blueberries, beets, things like that, rinse your mouth with water afterwards. Don't leave it on your teeth to stain your teeth. Coffee is a, is a big one. People you know, sip coffee all day and they stain their teeth. Um, floss brush, water pick, rinse your mouth, chew some sugarless gum if you can't uh, get the food out of your teeth and you're on the go. You don't have to chew it for hours and get a sore jaw. You can just chew it for five minutes and, and spit it out. It will keep your smile looking beautiful. And use that smile because when you smile, the world smiles along with you. And my twelfth beauty habit I have to mention to you because I'm a firm believer in regular exercise. It's so important. We talked earlier about circulation and enhancing blood flow with facial massage. Well, exercise is that in spades. It really is one of the best things that you can do to remove toxins, to increase blood flow and oxygen to your skin, and to stay youthful looking. Some activity every day should be a part of your life. And then maybe three or four times a week you can take it up to a level of higher intensity where you really start sweating and moving, okay? You know, walks are wonderful and you know, doing exercise outside is one of the best forms of exercise that you can do. I know that's not always possible and it's not always practical because of the weather, but when you can, do it. The rewards that you will reap over the years will far surpass any other thing that you can do. Exercise is really the fountain of youth. Now, that being said, you can overdo it. And when you overdo it, you literally have the opposite effect on your body. You wear it out. You cause your immune system to shut down. You cause yourself to age faster, okay, because it becomes a stressor. So that's why I said any activity counts. Gardening counts. Vacuuming counts anything that you are moving, standing and walking around your office to stretch your legs and let your blood flow. Counts. All right. So think, think in terms of activity and movement as exercise because, um, you know, pounding and wearing and tearing and, you know, feeling that burn, that's okay, um, you know, three times a week, but not every day. Not if you want to maintain um, youthful beauty. And number 13 best beauty habit is to get enough sleep. I wish I knew this when I was in my early 20s because I was burning the candle at both ends. But you know when you're young, you can get past it because you're young. But as you get older, burning the candle at both ends catches up with you and you start to age. So I can't stress enough how important it is for you to get a required amount of sleep every night. And I don't mean five or six hours, I mean eight to ten hours, preferably eight or nine if you can do it, all right? And try to catch up on the weekends. 
because that's when you can do that if you have a sleep deficit. But it's one of the best ways to revitalize yourself and your skin, your hair and your nails. That's when we renew ourselves. We make new cells. Our organs take a break. Um, our kidneys take a break. Our heart rests. And everything just calms down and settles down and real repair occurs. And we're coming into home stretch with number 14 and that is to drink water. Make sure you get enough. You need to be hydrated every day. Every single cell and organ in your body requires proper fluid balance and nothing hydrates your body like water. And if you're a coffee drinker, you're working against your hydration balance because coffee is a diuretic, causes you to lose fluids. Be aware of that and you have to compensate by getting enough water. One of the best times to get water is first thing in the morning. Have a glass of water upon waking. Uh, you can warm it up if it's a cold morning and then, you know, wait about a half an hour uh, until it's emptied out of your tummy a little bit and have your breakfast. You will have shinier hair, you will have clearer skin, beautiful nails, have more energy and more vitality simply by drinking enough water. And so I want to wrap this up with my last beauty habit that I think every woman should incorporate into her life. And that is the habit of not looking in the mirror and finding every little fault with the way you look. Don't focus on your flaws. Stop micromanaging every little thing. I'm not saying that you shouldn't notice things and then do something about them or get ahead of them by um, you know using facial massage and moisturizers and just taking better care of yourself because oops you notice that maybe you haven't been and now you're starting to see signs of aging. It's always so important to make changes and do things as soon as you notice something that's you know changing or, or going wrong that you don't like. Alright? I'm not saying that what I'm saying is what we do to ourselves when um, no one's listening, when it's the voice in our heads, it's how we focus in on our flaws, and what that ends up doing is ruining our self-confidence because that negative self-talk, that, that tape that's playing in your mind affects how you feel and how you project yourself towards the world. And it's really tragic because true beauty really does come from within. That's where the light shines from. Think of how you look at other people. Think of how you notice things on other people. What do you notice about someone? Do you notice every little wrinkle, every little freckle? Or do you notice their kindness, their warmth, their generosity? And do you look at them and think, how beautiful she is because you're basing that on what's coming out of inside of her. I feel that all women are diamonds. They're strong and precious and brilliant. The real beauty, the everlasting beauty, the beauty that everyone notices comes from inside. And the only way that that beauty can come out is with a positive dialogue with yourself, a positive mind and for you not to be critical of yourself. Your self-dialogue has to be positive. Start tonight. Don't pick out your faults. Don't fret about every little gray hair and wrinkle. Do something about it, you know. Color your hair, you know, wear a moisturizer. But don't let it depress you. And don't let it drive you the way of cosmetic procedures either. I am in my middle age and I have chosen to embrace my beauty in a natural way and help enhance it to slow down the effects of time. Others choose to inject themselves with fillers and Botox and try all different things in hopes that they can reverse time. No one can reverse time and that's a slippery slope. There's a lot of pressure on women. I know. I'm a woman. It's taken me years as well to be comfortable with myself and I'm trying to share that with you because I know 
I know how to get comfortable and it is in accepting who you are and how you look and working with what God gave you to make you the best version of yourself to embrace all of your natural beauty because there's so much to you there's so much beauty within you we've lived we've loved we've journeyed and all that is visible on our skin on our face in our laugh lines embrace it we all know when we encounter a truly beautiful person their physical beauty is usually secondary to their inner beauty which radiates out with incredible brilliance and shines so bright that we don't see a blemish or a wrinkle or a spot all we see is the bright glowing light of her inner beauty let that woman be you well i hope you enjoyed this video and if you did please give me a thumbs up and share it with others and if you're new to my channel please subscribe because i have a lot more to come something of interest to everyone and please visit me at my blog spot where i do a lot of writing and i'm also on facebook and twitter and instagram so we can stay connected there as well well thanks so much for viewing Thanks for joining me on this beautiful fall evening as the sun went down and the darkness fell and listening to the crickets. It's just me, you, and a couple of lights. And I really enjoyed talking to you out here. And I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. Bye-bye now.